Hi, this is Dennis K0TX with Digirig and today we're looking at the Digirig's audio component, the sound card. So the functions of that is basically to get the audio from the radio when you're receiving and get the encoded data into the audio stream and sending it to the radio so it can be transmitted on the air. So when you plug Digirig into the computer, it presents itself as a regular sound card among the other sound cards that your computer might have. So before we do anything else, we need to make sure that it is correctly detected because if it's not, anything else basically pointless. So we go to Device Manager by right-clicking the Start button in Windows and opening Device Manager link. It's going to be different process in different systems, but basically you need to go where you see a detected USB components. So under the sound, video, and game controllers, you're going to open the group here and then plug your Digirig into USB and see what pops up. Depending on the variant of your Digirig, you're going to either see USB PNP sound device or USB audio device. It's equivalent so that everything else is pretty much the same. So one of the two indicate the successful detection of Digirig sound card. So now we can proceed to setting up the settings associated with audio levels. We can right click the speaker here in the tray and then go to sounds. Here you should see Digirig entries under playback and recording. So by default it will be named the same as the description in the device manager like USB audio device in this case. I recommend renaming that, and I call this Digirig, obviously, and change the icon to modem. It's not required, but it will make it easier to uh, recognize these components in the lists, especially if you have multiple sound cards. And uh, another thing is the defaults. When computer sees the sound card for the first time, it assigns all the defaults to that sound card. We don't want that, so you'll find it like this with the defaults on the Digirig or USB audio device. To move it to your default speaker, we we'll right click and set defaults communication and regular default on the speaker, uh, default speaker of your computer, the one that you can hear normally. And we do the same with the recording device. Here you can see I move defo default to my microphone from the Digirig. So what it does, it's uh, when there's any sounds not related to ham radio we don't want that to go on the air so default uh, microphone and default playback devices are used for it and uh, for example if your system makes some noise and your digirig is a default playback device and the radio is on the air that goes in the air we don't want that so once that is taken care of we can go into other settings so on the playback we can set volume to 20 or 50 something like that initially later we can fine-tune that to the level that the radio needs and on the recording device the same thing we can set level conservative to 20 we want to make sure that automatic gain control is unchecked because otherwise the level is going to be ignored and it's probably going to be too much and there's a listen checkbox. Uh, we're going to get to that later. It's really helpful for the troubleshooting. So that basically concludes the initial settings. Now we want to make sure that everything works. So we want to make radio make some audio. So we're going to turn the radio on and we're going to get some sound. I have the weather station here. It's important to, uh, if you're using the regular uh, headphone connector or uh, speak, speaker mic connector, to disable the squelch so there is no cutout on the audio. So I'm going to connect the cable here. And I'm going to connect the cable on the Digirig side into socket labeled audio. Now, if we go to control panel again and look at the playback device, rather recording device, sorry. Once we turn
turn on the radio and audio comes in, we can actually see the level bar jumping. So that tells us that something is coming in. If we, if we wanted to actually hear what's coming in, what we can do, we can go to Digirig Listen Box, check it, and apply. This will route the audio from Digirig into your computer speakers, assuming you did the reassignment of default. 35 to 45. Here you go. Monday and Monday night, partly cloudy. Slight chance of showers and... It's great for troubleshooting, but it's going to get old pretty quick. So once you're certain that the audio is working, you turn that off. So now this tests inbound audio to Digirig. We know everything works, cable and everything else. So to check the outbound audio, simple way is to just plug the regular headphones, uh, like stereo headphones into the Digirix audio, and that will align some of the pins with the speaker in the headphones. I'm going to use this one to demonstrate it. And once you send audio into Digirig, you should hear it on one side. So I'm going to use WSJTX software here. I'm going to go to File and Settings and Audio and make sure that the Digirig is selected in the input and output device. You can use different software, that uh, ham radio software that will generate the audio, but WSJTX is probably the, the easiest one to do. So you can see those uh, components renamed. If you didn't rename, you'll probably see the USB audio device like a default names. So now we have sound card assigned. If we go and do the tune, we're gonna see that there's act actual audio in the playback. Here it's all maxed out. And you should see the tone into the headphones that you plugged in into into the audio jack right here. I can actually bump up the audio in the level here. And you can hear it louder. So that tests the audio out output from the Digirig, but not the cable. If we want to test cable as well, what we can do is to do the loopback. We can basically make Digirig listen to its own sound. So let me kill off that tuning tone for now. So what I'll do, I'll disconnect the cable from the radio, plug the cable into the Digirig, and I'm going to refer to the schematic for the cable. Depending on the cable that you use, it's going to be different, and the schematic is published in the, in the product pages and in forum. And we find the audio in and audio out. So we'll look for audio out will be on the tip of the 2.5 millimeter and audio in will be on the ring of on 3.5 millimeters. So once we connect them, that will basically loop back audio from Digirix output to Digirix input and it should listen basically to itself. So now let's go back and enable the tune tone again we see it coming out yeah and now we go to recording nothing there yet once we connect complete the loop back we see that there is a tone there we can actually go into the listen settings apply that and we can actually hear the tone that Digirig generates so that allowed us to basically ensure that the cable, the digirig, and everything on this side of the system works fine. If you still experience issues with getting audio in the air, it probably has to do with the radio settings or something else on the other side. So, but this will ensure that uh, you don't need to worry about digirig side of things, and you can focus on the correct thing, one thing at a time while troubleshooting. So uh, this concludes the audio setup and troubleshooting video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in, in the forum at forum.digirig.net. Search for existing posts. Feel free to contribute, comment to this video, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Dennis, K0TX, clear.